Over the years, my successes and failures in turkey hunting have boiled down to six key points. I got into turkey hunting 10 years ago when my uncle took me hunting for the youth season in North Carolina and I harvested my first turkey on my first hunt ever out, this tom right here. And I am just so blessed to have had that opportunity to be able to share that experience with my uncle. And since that hunt with my uncle, I've had to go through the journey and process of figuring out really how to turkey hunt on my own. So my first point on how to have a successful spring season is to do preseason scouting. It's really going to help you navigate where to actually find turkeys and be able to pattern how they're going to be acting as the spring progresses. The first point I'm looking for in this is really the habitat. Turkeys require a significant amount of habitat diversity to be able to survive in an area. Deer are fortunate enough that they can go forage 24 seven, anytime that they want really. Turkeys on the other hand, they're on the limb at nighttime. It's not like they can go acquire resources in the middle of the night. Because of this, turkeys have to have a significant amount of resources in a smaller area that they're able to basically go to in a day. They have to be able to have water, thick cover for nesting. They have to have food. Another thing is I've found that turkeys really gravitate towards water sources. I love to hunt along major streams and rivers. As I'm doing this preseason scouting, I'm really trying to listen for where the turkeys are roosted. Are they roosting in the same spot consistently or are they kind of bouncing around spot to spot? Am I kind of noticing that there's a group of toms over here that's more dominant and then there's a subordinate bird over here? You know, I'm just really just trying to gather information about the local turkey flock. And then another thing is once they fly down, I'm basically listening for where are they going? You know, another thing is, are there hens around? How's that interaction, you know, happening with the hens? The Tom's movement, you know, depending on where they're at in the spring is gonna be dictated to a certain extent by the hens. Another thing is I'm looking for obvious turkey sign. Am I finding feathers? Am I finding scratching? Am I finding droppings? Am I finding dust bowls where they're dusting themselves? I'm just keeping an eye out for just these obvious turkey signs as well. Now taking into account all the preseason scouting information we've gotten, really applies to point number two, which is to hunt where the turkeys want to be. Think about this scenario where you're hunting a turkey for a couple days, and you know from your preseason scouting that he roosts in a certain area and he navigates to a certain ridge, and you had scouted that, you found a bunch of sign, turkey sign, all that, and you end up hunting across the ditch from him on the opposite ridge. It's gonna be so much harder to call that turkey in compared to if you were already set up on that ridge. He wants to go there. You know he wants to go there. Beating him to that ridge is going to significantly increase your odds of harvesting that turkey. And in that situation, you really don't have to call much. If you basically just do some light calling and a little bit of scratching, that turkey's probably going to slip right in on you and he might not even gobble at all. A lot of the successful hunts I had with my uncle were a result of being in a spot where the turkeys naturally just wanted to be. Point number three is to hunt late morning and midday. As the spring progresses, hens are starting to leave toms and go to nest to basically lay eggs and to start sitting on those eggs to start the incubation process. This is a prime opportunity for you to call in lonely toms when those hens leave them later in the morning in the midday. Really my best hunts have been getting them right off the roost or late morning into early afternoon. And why I've had success in these two different time frames is because I'm either catching the tom before the hens basically meet to him. Meet to him. What? Or I'm getting him once the hens have left them in the morning and they are basically lonely and don't have any hens with them. Outside of those two time frames, it is really tricky to get on a turkey that basically wants to play. It is extremely hard to call a tom off of hens unless you're able to basically call the whole flock to you or get to where the flock wants to be. Point number four is something I've actually more recently learned and started to implement, and it is to basically find unpressured turkeys. Now, what does this mean? For me, it means being willing to either get access to private ground where less people have permission to hunt and then able to get on more unpressured turkeys, or I'm willing to drive farther distances on public land to be able to 
get on turkeys that other people aren't hunting. Personally, I would rather drive two hours to go hunt unpressured turkeys or significant lighter pressure compared to 15 minutes down the road to the piece of public land that absolutely everybody and their cousin is hunting. I'm not saying it's not worth it to go try to hunt the, that piece of public 15 minutes down the road. My point though is that those turkeys are gonna be significantly harder to hunt and you're also having to deal with all these other hunters in the woods and being surrounded by a bunch of other turkey hunters is not uh, ideal to say the least. Certainly makes it interesting, I'll put it that way. Those turkeys are probably not gonna gobble as much. They're gonna be more inclined to come in silent. Um, yeah, there's probably not gonna be as many of them. Point number five is to go silent. One of the most enjoyable aspects of turkey hunting is the communication that you get to have with that turkey. You're really playing a cat and mouse game and you know it's very exciting hearing that turkey gobble back to your call. But it's so easy to fall into the trap of basically just fishing for gobbles compared to really trying to tag that tom. That's insane. And one of the most effective strategies I've learned is to stop calling if a turkey is just not coming in. He's just hung up. And you know, it kind of defies your reasoning because you're like, well, he's answering back. You know, it's just a matter of time. You know, one more call and he's gonna come in. It's very easy to fall into that mindset and that trap. But really the best thing you can do is a lot of times just stop calling and just be patient and just wait them out. It might be an hour, hour and a half, you never know. But a lot of times that turkey will eventually navigate and filter his way over to you. And he's probably gonna come in silent. One of the other hardest things is for when he starts gobbling, you know, he might, he, 10 minutes might go by and you'll hear him gobble. And you, every part of you is gonna wanna call back to him and let him know you're still there but then that's just gonna restart the process of that him gobbling, you calling, him gobbling, you calling, compared to him actually making the commitment to come in and investigate to see if you're still there. It is very impressive how precise they are at knowing exactly where you're calling at. Point number six, wrapping this video up, is to pattern your gun. Really, this should have been point number one, but it's basically a given. If you don't know where your gun's hitting, then you need to start there. And there's really two things you need to know. Where's that gun's hitting and what's your effective range out to? Do yourself the favor to shoot your gun and to know that that is squared away because it's hard enough to even call in and get an opportunity to get a turkey, let alone for you to blow it because you didn't shoot your gun and you didn't know where it was hitting. I've missed turkeys over bunches of stupid reasons. You really don't need your gun to be a contributing factor to the stupidity. It is my hope that these six tips will be helpful in you tagging your next turkey this spring. If you are successful, I'd love to hear about it. Please drop a comment down below or send me a message over on Instagram. I'd love to hear about it. Anyways, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.